So far in lecture, you've seen angular momentum L described in the following way. Angular momentum is equal to rotational inertia multiplied by angular velocity. The angular momentum vector points in the same direction as the angular velocity vector. Ultimately, they both obey right-hand rule. So for example, if you have a turntable that is rotating like this, the angular velocity vector omega points upwards, therefore the angular momentum vector points upwards. However, right-hand rule, of course, comes from a cross product. So where is the cross product when talking about angular momentum? All right, the easiest way to answer this question is to examine the simplest possible case. Let's say that we have a point particle that is rotating about a fixed axis of rotation. So let me go ahead and draw this out in three dimensions, however. That is like so. So here is the xy plane, here is the z direction. Let's say that the point particle is circulating in the xy plane about an axis like so. Okay, and then right here, let's draw the particle at this point when we examine it. Okay, right here is the moment arm from the axis of rotation to this point, the particle has mass m. So right here is the moment arm r, like so. And then we also have a linear momentum vector p. The linear momentum vector p, mass times velocity, we'll say points in this direction, like so on the diagram, tangential to this circle. So right here is the linear momentum vector p, Linear momentum, of course, is mass times velocity. Okay, angular momentum is the cross product between r, the moment arm, and p, the linear momentum. L is equal to r cross p. Okay, now let's go ahead and show then the right-hand rule here with these vectors. So you have to picture the angle here between r and p as 90 degrees on my diagram, so, so we can begin to think of it like this. So let's say that right here is r, Here's the P vector, like so. Okay, in my description, right there is the right angle, like so. So then therefore, you would describe the cross product in the following manner. R cross P is like so. This then gives us the angular momentum vector L upwards. Like this. And notice that that's in the same direction in terms of the circulation of this object on the diagram, rotating around here on this red circle in this manner giving us an angular velocity vector, omega, pointing upwards as well. Okay, now the magnitude here of L is equal to RP times the sine of the angle. In this case, I'm just simply saying that the angle is 90 degrees, just to keep the situation easy to look at. Okay, the units then of L are as follows. We have kilograms, meters per second, multiplied by meters, so kilogram, meters squared per second, which you've already seen in the context of I omega. Now, how is this equal to I omega? Well, just for simplicity, let's once again set theta here equal to 90 degrees, keep it easy. So then therefore on my diagram, L is equal to R times P. Okay, P for a point particle is just MV. So we have here MVR, and V of course is R omega. Like so, and there's MR squared, which is the rotational inertia I of a point particle. So, and then as we can see here, ultimately then the direction of the L vector is the same as the direction of the omega vector. So that's how we arrive at L is equal to I omega for a point particle. But how does the cross product give us I omega for say a distribution of matter? Like this cylinder, for example, say rotating like this. So let me take you through a short derivation that shows how we go from the cross product to a description of I omega as this cylinder is rotating. Okay, so let me do some erasing here. Incidentally, however, before I do, let me take this description here of the cross product for angular momentum vector L and relate it to torque. We'll do so by differentiating this with respect to time. So let me do that first before I get to the cylinder situation. Okay, so DL dt. That's equal to the derivative of the cross product, R cross P. So let's go ahead and differentiate. So in order to do so, I'm going to have, first of all, dr dt cross P, and then plus R cross dp dt, like so. 
So that's just using product rule here for differentiation. This right here is velocity v. And now in this first cross product here, let me go ahead and write the momentum p as mass times velocity, like so. And then right over here is this second cross product, where if you recall from, say, Newton's second law, the change in momentum of a system with respect to time is equal to the net force f, like so. Okay, now take a look at this first cross product. What is the cross product between a vector and itself? It's zero because there is a zero degree angle between a vector and itself. So this term here drops out, and then therefore we're left with the following. Derivative of angular momentum with respect to time is r cross f, which is torque tau, like so. And then once again, if the sum of the external torques is equal to zero, then dl dt is equal to zero, and then therefore l, the angular momentum, is constant, which we've already seen, okay? So that's going through, strictly speaking, the cross product here. First of all, to describe angular momentum, and then how we've already seen it related to torque. Okay, now let's go ahead and get to this cylinder situation. Once again, how do you go from the cross product, r cross p, to ultimately describing an i omega associated with this distribution of matter? Okay, so let me do some erasing to do so. Okay, so I'll use a cylinder to visualize. And let's draw it out then in the following way. Okay, so a three-dimensional coordinate system once again. Let me go ahead and place my cylinder like this. Like so on the diagram. Okay, just to be clear, it goes down here in the negative z direction, like so. Okay, and then let's say that right here, the z-axis, this right here is the axis of rotation, so then therefore it's rotating like this on the diagram, like so. Okay, now let's pick a particle within the cylinder. Let's say that right here, for example, at the edge of the cylinder, is a little m sub i. Okay, and then the moment arm is going to go from the origin to that point. So right here, like so, let me draw that a little bit more clearly. There we go. Right there, like so, is the moment arm, r sub i. And then this point right here, if the cylinder is rotating in this manner, this point right here has a linear momentum vector p that's into the board. So right here, for example, is p sub i, like so, where p sub i is equal to m sub i times v sub i, like so. Okay, now on this diagram, I'm also going to define a couple of things. Right here, we're going to call this a capital R sub i. And then we're also going to define an angle here on this diagram. That's going to be this angle here. This angle here we're going to refer to as theta. Okay, now let's calculate the angular momentum, we'll call it L sub i, of this point particle. In order to do so, we have to do R cross P. So L sub i is going to equal R sub i cross p sub i. So let's take a look at those vectors. So right here is r sub i like so. And then the p sub i, remember, as this thing rotates like this, is into the board. So right here is p sub i. Okay, now there is a 90 degree angle between those two vectors. Let's go ahead and do the cross product. Watch this. r sub i cross p sub i gives me an l sub i like so. Right here is L sub i in this direction is perpendicular to these two vectors. And then in magnitude, L sub i is R sub i, P sub i times the sine of 90 degrees. There's a 90 degree angle here between R sub i and P sub i like so. Okay, now let me take this L sub i here and break it into components. I'm going to do so like this. Here and here. And let's go ahead and define an angle theta. Take a look at this component of L sub i, pointing to the left-hand side here in this description. What happens to this value here, this component that points to the left, with its symmetrical counterpart if I consider this point here on the cylinder as my m sub i? 
Well, this point here on the cylinder would have an R sub I that looks like this. Like so. The P sub I would be actually coming out of the page like so at this moment. Like so. And now watch this. If you do R cross P, you end up with an L sub I in this direction like so. And then we can take that L sub I and break it into components. Excuse me a moment. Here and here, where once again right here is our angle theta. Right here is this guy's component pointing to the right-hand side. Notice that this component here pointing to the right-hand side cancels out with this component here. So all of these horizontal components of the L sub I vector, they all cancel each other out. So this guy here cancels with its symmetrical counterpart. That's this one right over there. However, take a look at this component here that specifically points along the z-axis. It points in the same direction as this. So therefore, in order to get the total angular momentum of this cylinder as it's rotating, what I have to do is I have to sum over the z components here of this L sub i vector. Okay, now the L sub i vector, let me go ahead and write its z component like so. The z component is going to be r sub i, p sub i times 1, and then multiplied by the cosine of theta. Like so. Okay, now, r sub i cosine theta. That's this capital R sub i. Like so. Okay, p sub i is mv. So then therefore, let's replace p sub i with m sub i times v sub i. Like so. And then v sub i is going to equal capital R sub i times omega, where omega is the same for all points because it's a rigid object as it rotates. Like so. And now we add it all together to get the total angular momentum of the cylinder, for example, as it's rotating like so. Okay, so then therefore, the total angular momentum vector L is going to be the sum over the L sub i sub z's. So then therefore, it's this summation here, and then multiplied by omega. This, of course, right here is the rotational inertia of this cylinder as it's rotating about the z-axis. Like so. And there's L equals I omega for a distribution of matter. Next thing that we do is we start running through examples. We'll start that in the next video.